what I've been working on right now um, is a similar PDF to what you've seen before. So this is the same, the setup you've seen, this is the logos we talked about earlier. Um, I was trying to add a new logo style, um, just a different... Oh, hey, um, can, can you, uh, you you're, are you screen sharing right now? It should be. It... I, saw it, I saw it briefly. Okay, then let me try one more time. Sure. There we go. So okay, I see it now. Okay. So I'm, I'm trying a new logo style with a serif font just in comparison to the old one, which is just messing around with just different options. And and this is the... I think this is what I want to go with for just at least close-ish to final, and I don't know. I'm not... Just to give it a more classy feel, I guess, a little bit more Victorian since it's a murder mystery-style board game or card game, so it's just a little more Victorian... Okay, go on. Um, I have the illustrations, which I've been working on, um, and I still, for the cards at least, I'm still trying to get it so that it, all the cards work with this. I, I still want the name of the card. I still want the name of the character on the card. Even though it's not important for the gameplay itself, I still think that the character name is a component that is interesting, and I think graphically it just is an element which I'd like to incorporate. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I have the card design. So I've just been just messing around, moving things around, and some of these you saw before. For these ones, it just gets this mess where I've been struggling to get all the elements. There's only three elements I want. I want the title, the character, and then the three icons I need for the gameplay itself. And I don't know, I've been struggling a lot with getting the elements to work in a way where the negative space doesn't conflict with the character and where the icons are still the dominant feature on it. Since the icons are the most important part, the character has no bearing on it, the title has no bearing on it, the gameplay is all around the icons, so that's all you need. But then I don't... I mean, just making the icons the entire picture, that's boring. I want the card to be a dynamic and interesting. And then I have some horizontal concepts I've been working with. Oh. Um, so I actually... I like the one on the lower right corner the best so far. I mean, it's also one of the simplest, which might be a factor in it. Um... That just everything felt too messy when I was arranging as trying different ways of going the title on top, the icons on bottom, or switch them up, put the icons horizontal. And I think the hor putting the card horizontal gives more space for the characters and the icons. At least that's the thought press I've been working with. And then yeah. I have a page of graphic elements, but that's about it for this week. Okay. Um, so last time we talked, uh, I had recommended that I... Uh, um, you take some kind of card design, print some some something printed out, and put it on a table, and actually try to look at it, uh, and show it to other people, and, and and actually try to play it, or or at least do something with it. Have you done that yet? I'm actually did. There's only one really important thing came with it because I used um, some of the preliminary card designs from this page for that. Um, so the only thing that really came that is because way back here, the way the game is set up, like these cards. Um, I really, the, I think the icons need to be diagonal because what happens when you're looking at these rules cards, you need to scan for an icon, mm -hmm. and so the idea is that um, the rules card I hadn't designed them yet, so I just had them written down. But it was a lot easier to scan for icons when they had a unique horizontal and vertical position. So keeping it diagonal means that none of the icons are competing with each other. So if you need to look up an hourglass symbol, you know exactly where it is in the relative space of the card. Um, Whether you're looking at the row or the column. Yeah, um, um, but if you have it in a vertical position, if you're playing it, if you're looking for it on a column, they're all in a row, and so it gets a lot harder to find and just parse out where exactly the icon should be. Um, just because cool. you end up with nine icons on the board, and it it gets a little conflicted where each one belongs. That that's actually really uh, a really good finding, actually, um, and that is a good justification for having diagonal a diagonal set of columns uh, or set of icons. Um, yeah. Instead of just kind of doing it because you want to do it. Um, so. Well, I mean, I tried a couple different designs where they're flat and horizontal, and yeah. I don't know. Just it, the diagonal at least seemed to have some purpose, and other than that, I don't really have any function for the title or the character. Well, it's good to have that 
as a, as a backing. Uh, whenever you present this for a crit, you're going to want to have that in your back pocket. If it doesn't come up, it doesn't come up. But if you ever need to justify any of your design decisions, you have that uh, ready and available. And, and also just for your own sake. Like, you can say, I tried vertical, I tried horizontal, diagonal is the way to go, and, and it was just the right solution. Okay. So it's good. It, it's good. That, it's good that you tried these other things and then ended up where you where you were to start off with, because it, it doesn't matter where you end up. It's it's what you tried along the way to prove that okay. where you ended up is the right way to go. So um, this is good. Um, for for what I can tell, uh, do you have an example of any of your, of, of your cards all set up in a grid yet uh, that I can look at? Oh no! I when I was designing them, I had a smart objects so that whenever I made edits, it, I could have a grid of nine set up, and I could see the edits live, but I didn't put one in this PDF, unfortunately. Sure. No worries. Um, well, I'm actually wondering, did you try a more severe diagonal? Um, I, I didn't actually try it in, in testing. So if you look at the type, originally I had a 20-degree diagonal, mm -hmm. um, but when I was placing the icons down, the negative space looked really odd, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of negative space issues in these card concepts, but I found it was just this really large triangular gap on the bottom, or wherever I put the icons, it just seemed really harsh. I mean, ideally, the icons would be at a 45-degree angle for that maximum visibility on both columns and rows. Yeah. But that... I, I don't think that's possible, or maybe it is. I mean, I could try it, it just... I didn't even try 45 degrees, because that just seems so severe. Gotta try it. Yeah. <laughs> Can't just you're not ready yet to make those kinds of assumptions. <laughs> yeah, it it seemed like a reasonable assumption, but there's a lot of things I haven't tried actually. I was considering tying the icons to different graphic elements besides the icons themselves, like having one icon tied to the color of the card or one icon tied to the way the typeface looks, just as another visual indicator when you're looking at that grid of nine, so you can pinpoint a card really easily. That is a very good, honestly, double coding it that way, especially for something that, that if you're not looking for it, can just naturally feel like part of the background, mm -hmm. but is still uh, noticeable if you're looking for it. That's actually a really good idea. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's worth pursuing. Uh, at the moment, I think you've got uh, in, the, in the bottom right uh, card, mm -hmm. uh, I think you've got, you've got what you need. Um, okay. Uh, to start off with, as like the as the skeleton uh, of okay, yeah, I mean that just the basic layout is probably better, and uh, I mean it's probably better to have the icons on top because a lot of the other ones have the the name overtaking everything else. Yeah, I mean you don't want he butler. Yeah, I mean I was trying to have find different ways of having the everything interact with each other, so it didn't feel like the icons and the name and the character were floating separately. So I was trying to find have different ways of having them touch each other, interact, but it's just a, a, it obscures the type a little too much when he's covering it. Sure. So for what it's worth, um, the I think the, I think you've got the, you got a good set, uh, a good framework for for your icons, and that black bar. I don't know if you need it. Uh, okay. I mean, if if it helps, if it helps make sure that you know that you are setting apart those icons from everything else. It's cool, but it's also like a very uh, like modern, abstract thing yeah. when you're actually going for something that's that's more uh, Victorian and, and really cute. And to, and to that extent, on your logo, um, I saw that you you're, you have you have this uh, swoosh. Yeah. Um, but you're not using a swooshy typeface. Yeah, I, it was sort of a cop out. I was worried about the negative space created by that slant, and so I was trying to fill in the space. There's there's no negative space like if if you're gonna go diagonal go diagonal don't okay. don't, don't like wishy washy it with with something especially because you're if you're gonna do something with that make it as strong and necessary as the other design decisions that you've made so far okay like if there's a if there's a reason for it to have something in that little wedge negative space then cool. Um, like if you needed to put an icon, uh, because your, your game is about uh, solving a murder, so if you had like a murder implement or something, or a body, or or anything else in there in that space to take up that space, that's great. That and that actually fits your theme. But a swoosh doesn't really fit your theme. 
Yeah. Um, and and, and it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit a, a uh, bold serif typeface either. Yeah, I, I'm experimenting. Yeah, I know. Um, but you gotta you gotta stretch yourself a bit further. I understand that. And I, I mean, right now, I mean, basically, I'm just trying to nail down a single logo instead of doing my the comp logos and the just rough right. concept logos. And so, right now, the problem I'm having is that I'm spreading myself between a lot of different design elements simultaneously. So I'm trying to get the car design down while I get the logo down and then also finish the illustrations at the same time. And I haven't even gotten to my color comps yet. Which, right. I mean, it feels like... What part of the design process do you think color is important? Uh, you're g getting there. I think you've got to make the call right now, though. Um, okay. If, if you're not ready to make the call, then you're not going to be ready to make, uh, make any color. So... Uh, I, I think you've got a strong, strong enough logo to start off with, and you don't want to, you don't want to like just waste all your time on that and lose sight of the entire project because of that. Okay. So get rid of that swoosh. Stick with the serif. If you don't like it later, then then that's fine. But get all this together in as as complete a package as you can, so that you can look at the whole picture instead of like piecemealing uh, one one thing at a time. Yeah. Hmm. Um, to, to that extent, I think um, what you've got in, in your early card designs uh, with the character and, 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 their, and their name and all that stuff in a vertical format, I think that's a box design. What, okay. What you've got is, is solid as, like, I could see that on a box. Uh, okay. It may not work for your cards, but that's fine because the, the cards are a different thing. But in terms of retail and... A shelf presence and all this other stuff. Uh, I think that I mean that's that's strong box right there. Okay, I mean I wasn't sure how character focused the box would end up being, but I haven't even considered that box design yet, which is another consideration I need to take in before the project's done. What's your deadline? Um, we are approaching it soon. It's like the early May, so I have about three and a half weeks left. Holy cow, dude! Yeah. I fit a little more than I could chew, but i well, here, Here's the bright side. Um, you're you're further along than you think. It's just that you got to be willing to make the decisions to to get to the, get to the finish line. Yeah. So you've made good progress. You have a lot of assets. Um, don't worry about any more illustrations until you've got everything put together and you and you have you have enough illustrations right now to make some color comps. It, it, it's, okay. it's really where you're at right now. Um, so uh, I think you can take these uh, the illustrations you have right now, the chef, the butler, you had some other characters too, yeah? Yeah, I have the chef, the butler, the heiress. Um, actually, I have a third one somewhere in here. I will... Never mind. I can't find it. Or I, I had a fourth character, but it doesn't matter. But you, that, is, that is plenty to get some color comps done, um, in particular if you have the rest of the icons done. Um, and you have the be beginnings of a box done. Uh, you've got a logo done if you're willing to just cut off that swoosh and, and be done with it. Um, so I think you're I think you're good. I think you're 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 at a stage right now where you could be more finished than than, okay. than you may be afraid you are. It's just that it's, it's jumping that next step. I I feel like I, I just feel so intimidating. There's so many more elements than I anticipated. It's it only seems that way because they're all separate right now. You gotta put them all together, and and they won't seem so intimidating. Yeah, I guess. Um, so, be good. I mean, what's, it's gonna be good. When you're designing for, when you've got like a bunch of deliverables, you've got your your rule book, your box, your card design. I mean, what order do you go about that huge mess of components? Honestly, it varies by, uh, by the client. Um, a lot of times they will have uh, the text of the rule book complete first, um, but they won't have, they won't pr provide me with, um, or, or won't think to provide me at first with uh, prototype images, like, like photos of a typical game setup. So I need that visual reference in order to make the diagrams for uh, how, to, how to set up the game and how to play the game. Um, and so while we're working on that and getting that all sorted out, usually I will just look through the text and get a, get a sense of um, what the theme of the game is and all that other stuff. 
um, around this time also they'll usually provide me with uh, with some uh, some you know, visual reference that they've had like what are they inspired by what movies posters are they looking at and all that kind of thing okay um, but that's that's with me and a client it's not when I'm making my own game the thing I'm focused on is making sure that the actual uh, physical object is ready to play uh, on yeah. on the table easily. So I'm I'm in very much the same situation that you are right now because you're making your own game and also doing the graphic design for it. Um, so so I, right now where you are is usually where I am about about like maybe two weeks until until release or or. or or two weeks until I'm ready to ready to send out a print and play, uh, for example. Okay. Uh, so, so to answer your question more concretely, um, I do cards first because that is the thing that needs to be done to play. Uh, once the car, once the cards are done, then I, then I will do a cover, for example. Um, uh, that's that's usually when I also do a logo, but rarely will I ever make a logo independent of the cover. And I understand that that's a different situation than you're in because you're in part, you're doing this for design class, and so I'm sure yeah. logo design is as much a part of the project as anything. But it's important to to note that the likelihood of this product this product's logo appearing independent of any other marketing materials, independent of the box cover and all this other stuff, is really unlikely. Um, and so. You can show your logo independent of all the rest of your stuff, but I think it's going to be inevitably stronger um, as as a complete brand when you okay. when you whenever you do have that set up. Oh, that makes sense. Oh no, like that's that's a good direction. I don't have any experience in producing card games at all or any board games. It's it's good to know the process isn't that far off from what I'm doing. It just feels like a lot. Well, and there's no wrong one right way, of course. I mean, it's this is just the way I do it. Okay. Um, there's something else I was gonna ask. I forgot already. It was something relating to card design. Um, actually, yeah. So, um, for that Victorian style, um, in the so the middle bottom one, mm -hmm. I don't really design. It's a little cluttered. But if I had like a thinner frame for it, so instead of that kind of modern straight look that I have on on the lower right of this. In the middle right of this, I have a little more... I mean, it's not intricate, but do you think that would work more for just kind of a more classical look? Yeah, absolutely. Um, especially if you can integrate that with the... with the... Um, like, above the, above the names, um, you've got a whole line that's diagonal. And again, I'm not sure why that line is there, but... Okay. If that line forms the baseline for uh, for some uh, filigree that comes up to kind of cradle the 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 icons, okay, that would make a reason for that to be there. Makes sense. Yeah, no, that that makes sense. I that definitely be something to consider to give it more of a sense of purpose or weight. I mean, essentially, the line's only there because when I was designing the type independent of that, the line felt like it was useful for creating a baseline, but it's not necessary when you already have another baseline created by the look or the icons themselves. Exactly. And then it's just a little silly. Um, it, again, is one of the problems where I'm designing everything independent of one another and then bringing them in and just making a million different layouts. Um, I don't know, I challenge that you're facing is is establishing a hierarchy and yeah. if, every, if everything is busy and everything is detailed then nothing is uh, nothing is important like if everything's drawing your eye equally then, then there, there's no strong focus and we talked about this last time I thought yeah I I mean because I only had a few of these designs before but they're a lot simpler because there's no icons at all right, right. so so one problem I'm having I mean again these are all really rough just really simple, almost just sketches, but so when I'm designing them, the icons are really simple, the character is maybe not complex, but it's more complex than anything else on the page, and even the type is more complex than the icons. Mm -hmm. And so I'm having trouble, unless I just follow a really direct hierarchy of the icons go on top and they're bigger than everything else, I'm having trouble having the icons seem like a dominant force or like something that's important. Now, there's a difference between dominance and detail. If um, 
because really what you're looking at is contrast in this case. If you have very detailed illustrations and you have some de details in the text, then to contrast that, you would want simple icons. That, that's, and that's, that's essentially what I mean. If everything was detailed, then nothing would, be, would, would draw the eye. But when you have very large, clear, simple, bold icons on top of an otherwise very detailed and, and very elaborate and filigreed background, that is, that is the dominance. That, that okay. is the one thing that, and, and honestly, as it should be, because that's the one thing that you actually need to reference as you play the game, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's maybe, actually a good thing. Sorry, maybe what I'm seeing is just because the, the illustrations have a lot of high contrast, too, and the details smaller. So maybe that's the problem I'm encountering. The, uh, I think w uh, now is when you kind of want to do some color comps and see what you can do about um, applying... I'm not sure what kind of plans you have for your color, but um, if you have, what I'm imagining is like you could do a just try a flat field of color right now. Um, okay. I don't know where you are right now if you're in Photoshop or what, but um, do do a flat, make a just a one layer of one color and multiply it over the card, um, but leave the icons white. Okay. Just for and, that pop. Right. So that's gonna that that'll stand out. Alternately, you can flip that and make only the icons the colored aspect, the, the colored part of, of the entire card, and you can set whatever is black right now to be maybe a, a light gray that is multiplied over a paper texture so that it just looks it looks more like a, a rough, um, yeah. uh, like, aged uh, screen print. Uh, but but that's 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 the thing that you can focus on now. You've got a, you've got the, the the basis of a strong card design. And what you need the color to do is to supplement that and support that rather than get in the way. Okay. Yeah. To keep that contrast going, but also emphasize the icons over anything else. Exactly. Um, and it, now one thing to note: um, if you have color, um, unless the color indicates. Uh, uh, what, what were your plans for color? Before I just put words in your mouth here, what, what were your plans for that color? I was going to tie the color to the icon. I said the icon sets were 2, 2, and 3, and so the icon set that has three differentiations or variations, I was going to have that tied to the color of the card. Okay. Um, since that's the most variation and would be the most useful. And I was going to try to stick to strong, bold colors, so like just a really deep red or a deep blue, but nothing... I mean, I guess I could go pastel, but I was thinking something... Bold. Sure, sure. Um, good. Um, one thing to to be careful of. I ran into this problem with regime. Um, I had th I have three attributes on those cards as well, and they have characters. Um, and I tied the. I made one of those attributes color, uh, which was indicated by a symbol, uh, which w which was fine because that makes it color color blind friendly. Um, and I also applied that same color to the artwork. But the other two attributes didn't have any other secondary signifiers on the card. Um, okay. they, they didn't have anything else, um, and, or at least nothing of, of equal importance. So be careful about that, um, because I mean, it's fine. The, card, the game is still playable, but uh, a lot of people are wondering uh, if, when they first play the game, if color is the most important attribute, whereas the other two attributes are somehow less, less important. And in, in fact, they're not. They're all equally the same. Um, so whenever, whatever visual, secondary visual signifiers you uh, you correlate with your icons, make sure that they're balanced with each other on, on the rest of the card. Otherwise, keep them all the same color. Like put Make them all black on, on a tan background or something, and then only apply color to the icons so that they, okay. are, they are distinct from each other. So blue is always this blue icon, and red is always this red icon, and that kind of thing. Um, uh, so, so be careful about that to, uh, as, an, as a note of caution. Yeah, it's a good consideration. I, I hadn't really considered what other secondary indicators I was going to use for the other icons. I was thinking if I had a pattern in the background, that might be a good thing to use, but it might be more subtle than the color itself. Uh, if if it's helpful, um, what you could do is um, do borders if you if you want to do a border. Um, only one icon correlates with a with a particular border. Uh, one icon correlates with a particular uh, pattern of, of a background, um, and another, and then the third icon can still be color. 
but the so but so you still have strong indications of, of strong visual indicators indicators that correlate with each icon because um, mm -hmm. border is going to be easy to tell apart from, from one from the other so you can make a black border and white border um, if you have and the two other two other uh, so this, that's that's the, that's exterior first icon second icon it, that's a binary two right so uh, you can fill that with either a uh, like a, a vertical line background, like an etching, or a horizontal line background, like an etching. Um, and then you can apply a full flood color that correlates with the third icon, one of those three things. Um, okay. That's just one thing? I don't know. You can I mean, there's a lot of ways to do it. It'd yeah. be good to just jump in, I guess, and just yes. not worry too much about if it's the final design and just get as many color comps as possible. Yes, because you can spend a whole, you can waste a whole lot of time just talking about this and thinking it, thinking it over before you actually put pen to paper. Um, and and speaking of which, you could even just go ahead and print out a couple copies of, of your cards and just grab some markers and put them all together and see how they look. Um, if if that gets you out of your headspace a little bit, um, that that's that's a perfectly valid way to work. You don't you don't have to stick you know, stay on the computer all the time all the way through because a lot of times the computer can just slow you down more more than it speeds you up. And anyway, I think that's that is the questions I had, and that's just what I wanted to address right now. Cool. If you have any other advice or any other suggestions, that'd be great. Um, otherwise, I think that's what I needed this week. Have you done a card back yet? No, I have not even started on the card back. So I wasn't sure if I was going to do something cheap, like just throwing the logo and just slapping the logo on the back and calling it good, or whether Which I was going to do something more elaborate. That that's perfectly fine, honestly. Um, the, the card backs are often the last thing I think about <laughs> right before I, I actually go to production. Um, so it's perfectly fine to, to leave them off, but you don't want to forget about them. Yeah. I mean, right now, the card backs in the gameplay, the cards are almost never face down. Right. Except when you're shuffling, so it's not an element which is important to the gameplay, which right. is why I haven't really considered it <laughs> yet. And that's perfectly fine, too. Um, in those cases, um, you can just go with a simple back um, without without much detail, um, or you can make them a play aid and and have have a summary of the flow of play on the back, and that that can be handy too. Maybe just something to think about. But anyway, yes, don't forget about it though. Yeah, cool. It is definitely something I will need to do before the end of the project. Yeah. <laughs> or I just no one is ever allowed to flip the cards over, and I oh, just yeah, yeah, yeah. move them to the table. So what, what's your goal for the next time we meet? Um, I would like to have the, at least, if not finalized, at least have the card template for the characters. And then because I have two types of cards, the other card is just text, doesn't have a character on it, but I need to have that card design done too, or mm -hmm. at least have a significant progress on that. And I'd also like to have some color comps, so just some kind of indication or experimentation with having color in that design. So I need to finish up the graphic design, get some color comps down, and then figure out the design of the other card type. <laughs> yes, I think I think that's enough on your plate for the next time we meet. So um, you want to schedule this again for next Tuesday? Yeah, that'd be excellent. That'd okay. be great. All right. So I expect progress, color comps at least. Yes. And thank you so much for doing this. This is really useful to me, and I really appreciate your time. Absolutely. Anytime. All right. See you next week. Yep, excellent.